so it's afternoon already and a few days before the election the 30th and tomorrow's Halloween and guess what I did get a response from the Office of Civil Rights and somehow it's not within their prayer view to talk about public services and how they affect any one subgroup if the any one subgroup is not dealing with that on their own and you have to realize that we're living in America and we were born in America and as we were born here there's a certain level of personal responsibility that must be taken by individuals who are living on this piece of the earth and the reality is that most black people pay taxes and have paid paid into the system for years but the most reality is to understand that they are not benefiting as all others are benefiting under the official title of citizen or American or whatever you'd like to see yourself as truly 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 I am not the one that's going to discuss how you vision your life. But the reality is, is that overall, black people are not looking at the maintenance of effort for the public services that are aligned with every person in America. And immigrants get additional services because they get language services. But black people have gotten nothing. And the mere fact that we can't get under one roof and talk about the maintenance of effort for every age group living in America, especially in Las Vegas now, that the failure rate is a real reality and that the children are not faring well and the unemployment, and then it all just goes to behavior. I'm so sorry that willful defiance and de describing us as animals or animalistic or inhumane. I mean, the reality is, is that we're listed as subhumans because they're not required to provide you with the maintenance, a basic educational option. I mean, the basic educational option in America has been whittled down. It is just a modified behavior. And so many people have accepted that. I just don't get it. I don't get, I don't get it. It doesn't compute. I don't understand how you could understand that your child's not learning and you not do the work that would demand that they provide support services because you have a right to have an, a very detailed assessment to determine how your child learns and what support your child needs. And then you can come back and measure the maintenance of effort and how well your child's participating in the system every two to three weeks if you need be. But the mere fact is that we let them put our children in special ed and push them through the system. <laughs> And then the yellow bus is a target, I guess, but really not here so much. Busing is not an issue here so much simply because this is a rural and urban community together. And all of the children basically generate the same dollar. But when it comes down to the services aligned to the children who would be entitled to real services, well, there's just limited. They're not there. And I don't care if you're not graduating at college ready, ready levelness or that you have not been trained for employment then your struggle is real because after 12 years of public education system i can tell you less than 50 percent far less maybe less than 30 percent far less maybe 18 percent of african-american children are scoring at or above the 50 percentile for reading and math meaning that below grade level is something that has been accepted for our community people and, you know, you can get an A in special ed and it not, it not really be tied to anything except for maybe you came in with a smile on your face that morning. Quite frankly, mm -mm, I don't get it. You know, but I can tell you this, as I am 62 years old and I have had the opportunity to participate in the public process of engagement, they don't engage with black people here in Nevada. No, not really. They choose who they're going to engage with, and then they prop them up. They give them a little bit of authority. But on the whole, black people don't have anything. 
Because if you can't communicate your concerns to the people who are providing services to the children who look like you, then the reality is, is that you're not free to analyze or assess or evaluate the public service sector. But quite frankly, when we're living in Las Vegas and we have black people who come here who are paying so many federal taxes that go to the federal government and the federal services that are happening here, you cannot measure for the black people. So it is an issue. It is an issue because if you go to school for 12 years and you come out and you're not a voting citizen, that means that you're not analyzing and evaluating the system that you came through. And quite frankly, if you didn't graduate with a high school diploma, I don't know what you are doing. It doesn't look like a quality life working at fast food restaurants or being a servant in a, you know, it just doesn't, I mean, you know, I don't see the lateral, you know, way up the ladder for so many kids who, and then the 80% population of explosion out there in the, in, you know, in the juvenile halls. I mean, this is very troubling because this says we're at the beginning, we're in the middle of a pandemic and black people are not able to discuss what's happening to the children in Nevada because the services are not real. And when they say that they misplaced so many students, understand that perhaps it wasn't a misplacement, perhaps it was an unwillingness to, to share the maintenance of effort and the support of where those children were truly scoring because they just don't have a lot of data. And even if they have it, they're not willing to share it. And public information is truly public, meaning that how they spend those dollars and how they affect that community is real, real. Most people don't understand public policy. Most people don't understand being an American. Well, I can tell you, living in America is about local control. And yes, there is federal and state and county, but it is all about the way the local people choose to utilize the dollars and how those dollars affect those community members and how, those, how the benefit and how the jobs are analyzed with public service dollars. And, you know, we have so many nonprofits that are providing services to third party. They're third party and they have no requirement to meet the maintenance of effort. There was a mocking little tiny bird over there he just flew away uh hummingbird that's what it was but um really if you're not asking why am i i think that that's the most uh that i can say is because i can see a situation and understand what's going on as i was a parent that was truly engaged in the whole educational system and believe me there weren't that many black people out there doing what i was doing that's real and as I was able to serve as the chair of the district advisor for compensatory education in Title I, I understand that there's rules and regulations that go with that money. And those dollars are supposed to affect those children. And a district should have the opportunity and the ability to talk about how they're affecting those children and the accountability, the local accountability for the failure to maintain. That's a failure to create a citizen, a human being. That's that's pushing someone out the door before they're prepared. That's, you know, Black Lives Matter. That's, these kids with, are filled so much anger because they've just been used and abused. And the black community ain't saying nothing and I just can't believe it. I mean, it's really hard for me to believe that this is 2020. You know, it's like, in the year 2525, you know, if you're still alive, will you be able to talk about what the hell went on in 2020? I don't think so. I don't think that you really understand the amount of money that goes into public services and public education and then, you know, and then the inability, just the inability to understand that we are responsible because we truly have not done whatever we needed to do to ensure that life is better. After, I mean, people died so that we can have the right to participate in the public process. And then, you know, for so many years, so many people I know just didn't even bother to vote. And it just really wasn't even resonating in their minds that it was should be an eventful thing, that they should think about how the dollars come back, how 
Lauren Hill would pay $2.3 million and that money would be coming back to the local community to provide, you know, services for those children who were generating the money. And the poor people are the ones who generate the money. The poor, the disabled, and the English language learners, they generate dollars. But people who don't have any disabilities, well, you know, that's part of the state responsibility to educate all children. But the federal government does help support the ones that they mandated that have a right to have an education and that would be coming under Brown versus the Board of Education and how inclusion and how, that's why you see people fighting to get into magnet programs. I mean, there are really better programs, but you don't see a whole lot of people in poverty there. And I talked to a group of, of people or group of people who were talking about dem democracy versus socialization and I just don't see socialization. But, you know, I had a young Caucasian teacher that was talking about how different it was and how there was really no effort to educate children who were African-American and Latino. But you know, that's those parents' fault. I mean, parent involvement, parent engagement, and the demand for the community is real. And people have to know that they have to hold people accountable that are working with their children. I mean, that's just a simple fact, but it's not simple, is it? Because we depend on the system to be functional. But guess what, there's no functioning there's no, there's no bottom line, let's put it like that. There's no requirements in public education. I mean, you know, this is just something that I believe the system is truly trying to pull away from, not having the responsibility to educate all Americans. But that will be our fault if we allow that to happen as American citizens, because truly that's what we are. They gave us citizenship, and then they didn't teach us how to use it. But if you understand that, if you read the law, that's the whole purpose and the intent behind lawyers and judges, so that you can argue your case. And quite frankly, because we got our civil rights under the 13th, 14th, and 15th Amendment, and the offer of a FAPE, and that would be a free and appropriate public education, but the responsibility be given to the state, and then for the state to ignore the community in which it has an obligation to educate. And I just don't get it. I don't get how people don't get pissed off about it, but guess what? My child graduated from school. I can't say my children, all of my children graduated from high school. So I can't, I can't get to what the willful defiance says, but guess what? I was able to save a young man, me and another parent. We went all the way to the County Office of Education to overturn an expulsion, and we did. And that young man became a doctor. And I'm just telling you, you don't know what you're here for, but believe me, Public education is a public resource, and the public has a responsibility and obligation to demand reasonable outcomes from the maintenance of effort and from all those people being employed under Title I and Title 34 and Title whatever. Any job that is linked to a federal dollar has a maintenance of effort and should be providing a benefit for the community in which it generates the funds. And quite frankly, I don't know how we don't talk about it. I mean, you know, behavior is one thing and FU is one thing. And I know you didn't know that, but FU is considered a terrorist threat and can get you a five-year felony sentence. You, you didn't know that. So keep your mouth cool. I mean, there's just so much you don't know. But what I do know is that between what, what it means to have a free and appropriate public education means that the community must demand the maintenance of effort. The community must look out for those who cannot look out for themselves, the least of us. And truly, we must stand up before this 2020 election and select someone who's going to allow us to have our voices and not deny us the right to share our concerns regarding the failure of the public service sector for African-American children, for black children, for whatever you want to call yourself. But guess what? When you were born in this country, you are tied to the country and you have to demand that the country recognizes you as a full human being, as a human and entitled to a maintenance of effort because we're paying taxes. We're paying taxes for everything. We pay for those services and they need to benefit us. Until I get back on, this is Darling Anderson signing off, the DA, and um, watch some of my other videos. I mean, you know, this is a life experience. And I can guarantee you, not many people have had the experience that I've had during 
my 60 something years relevant to advocacy for children who have rights basically all children have rights it doesn't matter what color they are but the demand for accountability comes from the people and the people here in Clark County need to step up that's what I'll say this is Darlene Anderson signing out